There are many things in life that are there purely and simply to wipe the smile off your face. One-way systems, mosquitoes and politicians. But one thing guaranteed to take the shine off of anyone's ride is a puncture. I even know someone who hates them so much he refuses to say it and instead just uses the P word. Now, I've always maintained that punctures are part and parcel of being a cyclist. No, 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 no. They're such an integral part of being on the road that if you haven't had one, I would argue that you probably haven't been cycling for very long. It's not going to be a question of if you get a puncture, but rather when you will get one. And believe me, that day will come. So, having established that punctures are as guaranteed as the proverbial death and taxes, what can you do about them? Well, when your tyre goes flat, you have two basic choices. Option one is to replace or repair the tube, and option two is, depending on how far you are from home, either a long walk or an expensive taxi ride. For me, option one is the most sensible, and not just because I hate walking in cleats and I'm too tight-fisted for a taxi fare. No, it's because it's the most sensible, as replacing or repairing the tube is fairly easy and you can be back on the road enjoying your ride before you know it. Now, this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to replace a tube or repair a punctured one. I've already made a couple of films covering these two subjects, so I'll just put a link to these in the description below. But what I will say now is that getting yourself back on the road only works if you're well prepared, and that means always carrying at least two spare tubes a set of tyre levers, a pump and a puncture repair kit. All of this stuff will fit nice and neatly into a saddlebag or even a jersey pocket. So why two tubes? Well, it's not unusual to get more than one puncture on the same ride. I've sometimes had a rear blowout and then a few minutes later a front one. Very frustrating. It's also possible that the new tube can get pinched as you're replacing it resulting in an instant failure. Or it could simply be that the tube itself is a little old or has been pierced while it's been stored in your saddlebag for a few months. Either way, it just won't inflate, no matter how hard you try. Although the actual process of replacing or repairing a tube is fairly easy and straightforward, it can be a right pain in the arse especially when you're by the side of the road and it's cold, wet or at night. The last thing you want to be doing is fiddling around with inner tubes and tyres while the rain is coming down in buckets and cars are hurtling past. Again, preparation here is the key. If you're new to cycling, I would suggest practicing your puncture routine in the comfort of your own home before you have to do it for real actually out on the road. Getting it right in the warm and dry with a cup of tea and a hobnob should be about as easy as it gets. And once you've done this several times and built up your confidence, doing it for real will not be quite as intimidating. Obviously, the best thing would be to try and avoid punctures altogether. But is this even possible? Well, in a word, no. The best you can possibly hope for is to reduce your risk of getting one, and this all starts with your choice of tyre. A truly puncture-proof tyre simply doesn't exist, but a good quality tyre, such as these Continentals, will always offer a much better degree of puncture protection over cheaper ones. Essentially, the thicker and stronger the rubber, the less likely it is that a sharp object such as a stone or piece of glass will get through to the inner tube. Back in the day, I used to ride tyres that were lined with Kevlar, yes, the exact same stuff that bulletproof vests were made from, and I still got punctures.
The slight downside of the more puncture resistant tyres is increased weight and rolling resistance, which essentially means that you'll be riding just that little bit slower. But unless you're racing or being chased by a bear, I have a lot of viewers in Canada, this slight reduction of speed probably won't mean all that much. If you also factor in the time it would have taken you to fix it if you'd punctured though, you'll probably end up with an overall net faster ride door to door. I've heard a lot of talk recently about tubular tyres and how they offer greater puncture protection. Now I have to admit that I'm slightly confused about this because I've always been led to believe that tubular tyres or tubs are really only for serious racing cyclists and don't offer any greater protection than regular tyres. In fact if you do puncture a tub I always thought that you cannot repair it or replace it by yourself but I'm sure that you, the good people of YouTube, will correct me if I'm wrong. The only other thing you can do to reduce your risk of punctures is to ride as carefully as possible. Now I've left this until last because it's probably the least effective thing that you can do. More often than not, the thing that punctures your tyre is so tiny you'll have a hard job actually seeing it when it's embedded in your tyre. So keeping an eye out for something that small over a long ride while you're moving at speed just isn't going to happen. There is mileage though in keeping an eye out for larger areas of broken glass and road debris. Pierce punctures are more likely to happen in the wet because it's easier for a sharp object to stick to your tyre. It might not cause a puncture straight away, but with it stuck to your tyre, you're literally riding over that same object again and again with every wheel revolution. So it may only be a matter of time before it does cause one. With this in mind, it's always a good idea to give your tyres a quick wipe off when you get home after a wet ride to remove anything that might still be stuck to them. Some punctures are what we call pinch flats, and these happen when the tube comes into abrupt contact with the normal structures within the wheel itself. For example, when you hit a pothole at speed or some other such object. Now nobody in their right mind deliberately rides over potholes, but they can be hidden. One way to try and avoid this is not to ride through any areas of standing water. Unfortunately, the only way to truly avoid getting punctures at all is to stop riding your bike. I know for me personally, the pleasure I get from cycling far outweighs the slight downside of having to deal with a flat. In some ways, getting a puncture is a bit of a baptism or a rite of passage, so don't be afraid of them. When you do puncture, just fix it and be on your merry way. Thanks for watching.